it is our one year birthday today for Fit Garage. Happy birthday, Evan. <laughs> it's been one year exactly to this day since we launched our first video and we wanted to share some of our experience and what we've learned in this past year having a YouTube channel. As I'm recording this video, it is our birthday, but when this video does go up, it will be, you know, a, a year and a few days, but <laughs> we had to get this video yeah. out to you guys as soon as possible. So November 17th was our one year YouTube anniversary. All right, so let's talk about a little bit what we've learned in this last year. So the first thing, if you're new to YouTube, if you haven't started a channel at all, the first thing your concern is monetization and getting there. You're going to need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours before you can start making any money from YouTube. Now, I know when you first get started, what's going to be on your mind is making money. It was on ours and it's on many YouTubers that making money. But in reality, you need to kind of push the money making part aside and focus on what you're going to shoot videos on uh, and that love, that passion for that content. Uh, that you're going to give to the people out there. So before we start sharing our numbers, and uh, we're going to dive into our analytics and show you guys, uh, we want to talk about some things getting started as far as like equipment. Uh, when we first got started, you know, you don't need the most expensive camera out there. When we first started, what, what were we using? We were using the GoPro Hero 4 and the Canon T6 that I had from my photography class. Right. The the Quality wasn't great, but it, it wasn't horrible either. I've seen some horrible videos out there from YouTubers and they're getting a lot of uh, views and subscribers. It's not horrible quality, it's, it's average. Um, it's still in HD, but right. it's average. <laughs> yeah. So don't spend too much money just getting started. If you have, uh, right now, Evan just upgraded to the iPhone 12 Pro and this is what we're shooting this video with. All right, so as you start using social media more, uh, I know you're probably already using it, we all are, uh, but you're gonna be using it more, especially if you start a YouTube channel. And what we've noticed a lot is when we started our YouTube channel not too long after, we started getting a lot of ads popping up on our Instagram, our Facebook feeds, about like paid views, paid subscribers, get people to go to your, uh, your channel and get more views. I do not recommend doing that at all. We've never done it, but I've heard from other people who have that it messes with the algorithm in YouTube and it can uh, demonetize you. So don't pay for views or subscribers. Now, as you get started, you want to reach out to other YouTubers, uh, make friends. Uh, we made a lot of friends uh, that we chat with regularly. I mean, once a week, we have our own group that we talk about cars, other car people. I pack, get exhausted, exhausted outdoors. Rebecca and E Vapors, shout out to you guys. Um, great ideas, more heads. The, the more brain power goes behind a long, successful career in YouTube. So, as far as growth, and I'm sure you guys watching this out there already have every social media platform out there. You know, Instagram. Facebook, um, TikTok, Twitter, uh, what else is out there? I'm a, I'm a lot older. I mean, I'm not as old as I... <laughs> Reddit. Reddit's Red, a big one, too. Reddit. Uh, TikTok is a big platform that is booming right now, and if you do plan on making a YouTube channel, TikTok is the way to go. That's how we got most of our subscribers, views. You really have to promote on there, and that's what we've been trying to do lately. It's not many likes, but you are getting those impressions. All right. And now we're going to dive into our numbers since he's bringing up TikTok. I want to show you something on the graph here that uh, is a spike from a TikTok video that Evan posted. And it just, it went viral. And semi-viral. It didn't get well, completely viral. Well, semi-viral. I mean, how many views did it get? Half a million views. Half a million views. I, to me, that's, that's viral. Half a million views. So, and that had a positive impact on our YouTube channel. So TikTok is where is that? All right, so let's jump in here real quick. You can see that spike right in the middle of, like right before, like July, I would say that's like the end of June, beginning of July. That spike is from that TikTok video Evan posted. And uh, we had a lot of people come over. And that was views. That was all views. Yeah, that was all views. Now, if we head over to sub, can we go over to su subscribers? There's that spike. 
Same time frame, that's from that TikTok video. Watch time is a big factor to both the algorithm and the monetization. So the more watch time you do have, the more people YouTube is gonna push your videos to because you're getting that content and they're able to throw those ads on your videos if you are monetized. So they're gonna push these videos to other people so people can view these ads and YouTube will make money. Speaking of watch time, there's a few things that you want to do with your videos. Uh, one of them is the cards. You, in your videos, you want to place cards. If we go over to our, um, so just our studio, we yeah, pick any video, hit edit. So right here under cards, you see I have four in there. You want to put four to five, depending how long your video is. You want to say over 10 minutes if you can. So I got four cards in here, which are links to other videos. If we're doing a zero 60 run and we have a video that we did about draggy in the past, I'll put a card in there uh, for the draggy video. Um, and anything else as we go along as I talk about it, even if I'm not talking about it, I'll drop another card in there every like two to three minutes. It helps with keeping people on the page and watching your videos. Watch time. Watch like time. I said, it's big. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing you want to do is having an end screen. You just don't want to stop your video at the end. Um, it looks more professional. Plus, at the end screen, you can put a um, a playlist, a link to your to subscribe. Now, the next important thing is call of action. Uh, at the beginning, we didn't do it too much, and we started to as we got more comfortable. I tell you what, I was nervous as hell getting in front of a camera. I never did it before. And uh, it took a few times after, you know, two, three videos, I felt more comfortable getting in front of the camera. And um, call to action is very important. Making sure you tell them at the beginning of the video, if you're new, make sure you subscribe, uh, hit the notification bell, bell so you never miss a video. And at the end, make sure you tell them that smash that like button so if, you know, if they liked it. And get comments. Another thing, since we're talking about likes and comments, if you're going to have haters out there. You get dislikes, do not get discouraged. If you get, uh, you know, bad comments, don't comment back. You know, just ignore them. Good comments, reply. The bad ones, don't even, don't even bother replying back. That's what they want. They want you to reply and feed back into the hate. And even if you get dislikes, it all counts as ranking and interactions. And YouTube sees that, that people are interacting with your video, so it goes up. Now, when we first started, we started with DIY videos, doing installs, stuff like that. And uh, not till late recently, we started doing more vlog style videos. We're trying to transition into that little vlogging phase. So we will get more content and... We have a mix. We want a mix. We want DIY show people how to install things and also more of a vlogging uh, channel yeah. as well. Yeah. People like to see vlogging videos like a day in the life uh, of you. You know, going out to wherever it is, uh, just vlogging that video, and whatever you like to do, you know, just vlogging about your, your life. So they're like, they're with you and they see the other side of you instead of in front of a camera. They see the, the life of blank, blank, blank. <laughs> so next thing I want to talk about is rebranding. Um, think about hard what you're going to name your YouTube channel. A lot of people that have channels usually just do their name if it's like a... Uh, maybe a stylist, a hairstylist, or a financial guy or woman. Even people in the automotive community just do their name. So we went through a little bit of rebranding. When we first started, we were M Sport and 5 because I had the M Sport. But then one night, Evan and I were talking and we want to be able to add more cars to the garage. We don't want to be stuck with this uh, same name. Eventually, we're going to run out of videos for this car. We're going to need to get another car. We want to add more cars to the garage in the future. Right. So it all came down of what's the best move for the channel. Right. So then that's why we changed a thick garage. So think about long and hard what you uh, want to name your channel before you just jump into it. And uh, think about the future, what you want to do. Because really, I wasn't even going to do this when I bought the car. Evan talked me into doing it together. So right away, you know, like, all right, well, let's do M Sport in five, not thinking about down the road how far we're going to come with this YouTube channel, how far we can go with it. And then that point, you know, I was like, well, let's, we want to add more cars. You know, I want to eventually get another vehicle, which I'm not going to disclose right now because I want it to be a surprise. And, you know, so we wouldn't have to change the name at that point. Another thing that I would like to say about rebranding is 
think of something that fits your niche perfectly and something that is catchy to viewers. So there's people that I know that people that I'm friends with that know our channel and they memorize it easily because my generation says thick a lot. And especially at car shows, they'll be like, oh yeah, that car is thick. Or that car has a thick booty talking about their rear end. So it's something that's like in the car community and... Thick was big when I was in high school. That was in the 90s, 95. I'm bringing Carhartt back too. <laughs> <laughs> so let me dig a little bit deeper into uh, YouTube Studio. They have this area under audience where they show you the best times to post videos. Uh, Sundays, Mondays, Tuesdays. Now, depending on your area, that can be different than what ours is. The dark purple is when most of our viewers are on. Now, this is not 100% accurate, although Sunday mornings are one of the best days to put on around 10 o'clock to post. And depending on what your niche is, um, some people post every day, some people post every two days, some people post once a week. Some people post twice a day. <laughs> some, some people post twice a day. It depends on your, your niche. Like a, a stylist may post every day. A, uh, I'm going to bring up a financial person, may post every day, uh, twice a day. So another must have is TubeBuddy. Um, if you go into one of our content, go to content, go in one of our videos. It's great for getting tags, keywords, um, showing you some more data. You can get the free version. They do offer a paid version as well. But uh, let's go back. So if you go to tags, they can help you with tag. tag. See down here where we have the mouse, tag tools, recommended tags. See, on the free version, they don't give you like recommended tags, but on the paid version, they do. So it's a great tool to have. Start out with the free one. Uh, we're still using the free one, like I said, and um, yeah, that's a must-have. Now, for best practices, I'm going to admit we don't do this, but having a schedule, uh, we, we do. We try to. We determine when we're going to post, what videos and what day we're going to shoot them. And uh, having a schedule of your video, and depending on how often you're going to post, uh, write down what you want to post about, even having a script of that video, a brief script of what you're going to do. Uh, say Monday, I'm going to shoot this video. This is what it's going to be about. Tuesday, you are going to or do this video or Wednesday, whatever days you're going to do a video. Consistency is yeah, what matters. Exactly. Consistency is where I'm getting at. Be consistent. If you're going to post uh, once a week, keep it once a week. If you're going to post twice a week, do it twice a week. We've, you know, I'm going to admit we've gone sometimes because uh, DIYs cost a lot of money as far as mods and uh, can't always dump money out. So that's where vlogs would come in and help doing um, you know, as fillers. Be consistent. If you're going to post once a week, post once a week. You can post an extra time here and there. The more the better. The thing is though with vlogging and those type of videos is, you know, this coronavirus is really messing up all of that and we can't really go out and do stuff that we would normally do. So it's kind of hard to be vlogging at this time. It is, but it's a great time to start a YouTube channel. We're all sitting at home. Um, there's no better time than to start a YouTube channel than right now. And you see it. I mean, if you follow the stock market, you see um, uh, Zoom is is up the stock market i mean people are on facebook people are you know social media is being used more than anything right now so take advantage of it if you're thinking about starting youtube do it don't be stressing about camera equipment just take out your phone like we did i mean we we kind of got tired of bringing around a camera you can't fit a camera in your pocket my phone is perfect fits in my pocket if we want to shoot a video, I just pull my phone out of my pocket and we start filming. It's not hard. You have no excuses. <laughs> <laughs> now going back to where I was talking about um, the cards and end screens, stuff like that. Another important thing you want to do as you're posting videos is creating playlists. They're very important. Um, keeping things organized and that way you can add your playlists into your cards as well. And breaking them down if you're doing a DIY like we do. Um, you know, I have one for the BMW, we have another one for Evans Mercedes, we have other ones for BMW maintenance, you know, separating how-to videos. Vehicle reviews, we yeah. have 
detailing videos, top 10 videos, we have the dyno videos, all the zero to 60 runs, and then the dyno that we did. Yeah, pain then, correction is yep. another playlist. So break them up uh, as far as topic. Now in the first year of us having a YouTube channel, these are the main key points that we found are the most important that help build a successful YouTube channel. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button, subscribe if you're new, ring that bell for notifications, and we will see you in the next video. Thank you.